2008's Treeless Mountain seems to effortlessly show the confused state of abandonment from the eyes of a 7-year-old and 5-year-old child after their mother just mysteriously, for some reason, we're not entirely sure, gets up and leaves them with their quote-unquote big aunt. This is not a movie you watch for pleasure or enjoyment per se, but it is certainly worth a watch to see how these events unfold so earnestly and what comes across as truthfully from these little girls' points of view. Not only did So Young Kim direct this movie in her sophomoric outing, but she also wrote it and co-edited and produced it as well. Her first movie in 2006 was called In Between Days, and that was about a young woman who had immigrated to America and was trying to adapt to her new surroundings. So there's a similar theme from her first movie on into this one about having to adapt to unfamiliar grounds and ways of life. There are also echoes of an earlier Japanese movie called Nobody Knows, which I've also done a retrospective for on the channel. And there's also similarities between the another South Korean film called A Brand New Life, which I've also done a retrospective of on the channel. In both of those movies, they likewise deal with abandonment of little children and seeing it primarily through their eyes. Nobody Knows and A Brand New Life are near, if not entirely, I would say, masterpieces. And it seems apparent that this movie took influence from Nobody Knows on some levels. While A Brand New Life came out around this time in 2009, so I wouldn't say there was any influence from that movie. Similar to those movies, not only is it about abandonment and seeing it through their eyes, but the performances from the two lead girls. Kim is able to extract with these newcomers to acting really naturalistic performances. When watching, they feel and seem so real and in the moment. It's quite impressive. The seven-year-old character, Jin, in particular, this actress really has to carry the movie. She has the most dynamic performance, has the greatest range of emotions that she's going through as her, she learns that her mother has abandoned her with her aunt and isn't coming back. And eventually, as she and Ben both learn that this aunt really doesn't care about them at all and is darn near, if not outright abusive towards them, only to then go to the grandparents' home and automatically, of course, after everything she's gone through, have a sense of dread and doubt, expecting at any moment for them to be neglected, abused, or just simply be non-existent in most people's eyes, as that seems to have been the case all the way up to this point after their mother abandoned them. Also similar to those two other movies I mentioned, it's never understood or it's a bit ambiguous or quite a bit ambiguous as to why the mother actually leaves the children. All we are told is that she is going to search for the ex-husband, boyfriend, father of the children. We don't know his story or anything. She's just supposedly off to find him, maybe due to her hardship maybe to try to reignite things, maybe she's just given up on the children. It's never really stated. So that goes back to seeing it from the children's point of view. They don't know, we don't know. Everything that happens is happening as they see it. Also, like those two movies, this movie has absolutely no soundtrack. It is silent throughout. The only score, so to speak, is the natural sounds of the environment. When a tree swishes or the wind rustles leaves, that is the extent to accentuate any type of emotion or actions that occur. And it works as is. It really adds to that naturalistic, as things unfold, organic feeling of the movie. Where this movie may falter 
and may be a point of contention for audiences is how there is no wrapping up for the ending. The girls seem to be in a better situation than they were with their aunt, but the future is very left up in the air, very vague, very ambiguous. It's unknown. And so for some people, that ending may be very unsatisfying. For me, I'm a little on the fence with it because for a movie like this, I don't like it necessarily spelled out for me as to everything that's happened and everybody's hugging and kissing and happy, happy ending at the end. That's not necessarily what a movie like this needs for me to appreciate what it's trying to do and what it's trying to say. However, the fact that it's just so vague leaves me wanting to know just a little bit more. After all, the movie has this bleak tone throughout and just to end not entirely on a bleak tone, but still nothing really positive having happened and, and again, not knowing what's going to happen, it leaves a bit left to be desired. Treeless Mountain is not what I feel to be the near masterpiece that nobody knows and probably even more so A Brand New Life is. However, in this genre of drama where kids are abandoned and, and dealing with finding themselves, it is a solid movie, particularly the setting in the countryside of South Korea, as are, of course, first and foremost, the performances of the five and seven year old. They are pretty transfixing. They are, they, they are so good. It also really nails that sense and feeling that children would go through if these events were to occur to them. And it's something that's really hard for adults to fully grasp once we are out of childhood. It's hard to remember what you were thinking and what you were like at that young age exactly. And this director seems very, very committed, not only to that theme, but also this situation, given how real and well done this movie is.